hi my youtube friends and family my facebook friends and family welcome back to my channel for those who are clicking for the first time my name is marceline today i'm gonna be sharing with you a lovely dinner idea for your husband wife boyfriend girlfriend whomever for valentine's day or just a special occasion it could be birthday or anniversary because i know some people don't celebrate valentine's all right so thank you for clicking Stay tuned, I'm gonna be making some roasted fish. This is not the typical Jamaican roast fish because we're gonna be doing it in the oven. Um, you can also do it on the stove or outside on the grill, but it's cold right now, so we're gonna be doing it in the oven. So thank you for stopping by and stay tuned. Let's get straight into the video. So I have here two red snapper. They're already clean. I'm gonna continue cleaning them out and uh, I'm also going to cut these off, cut the fins and the tails. Just going to trim them up and then we're going to wash it with these lemons. Even though the inside is already clean, I'm just going to go over it and then we're going to make some slices on the side and rinse with some lemon and then I'll come back. So in my intro, I forgot to mention that I'm also going to be making some curried shrimp. We're just making some regular curry shrimp. Normally I would make coconut curry shrimp, but today we're just going in with some regular curry shrimp. All right, as you can see, I still found scale on the fish even though it was scaled already. So sometimes you have to double check and go over it with your knife. Now I'm just gonna rinse it and then we're gonna move on to our seasoning process. So now that they are nice and clean, I am gonna prepare the seasoning for them and then I'm gonna set them aside to marinate while I cook my filling. I'm gonna use Kalaloo for the filling, but yeah, you guys have already seen me cook Kalaloo more than once, so I'm going to cook it off camera. I'm going to pre-cook it so that I can stuff the fish with it. Alright, so let's prepare the seasonings. So in here I have some scotch bonnet peppers, garlic, onion, and scallion. I'm going to chop them up and then we're going to add them to the fish. So now for the dry seasoning, I'm adding a three quarter tablespoon of my New Orleans Cajun seasonings. I'm adding some paprika, about a teaspoon of paprika. And I'm going to be showing you the name of the seasoning. I'm adding a half teaspoon of black pepper. This was the seasoning that I added first because sometimes persons are saying that I don't show the type of seasoning that I'm using. Now I'm adding a teaspoon of my all-purpose, which is the Creole all-purpose seasoning. And now I'm going to add some dry thyme. After adding the dry thyme, I'm also going to add some other dry herbs. If you don't have any more dry herbs other than thyme, then that's fine. But I'm adding a tablespoon of dry herbs. All right. And also, remember, you don't have to use the same brand seasoning that I'm using. So if you don't have it, that's fine. Just use whatever seasoning you have. Now I'm adding a tablespoon of lemon juice and a teaspoon of cannoli oil. I'm just gonna mix up all of this and then I'm gonna add my blended green herbs, which was onion, scallion, scotch bonnet, pepper, and garlic. I'm adding half teaspoon of salt. You know, it's fish and it needs a little bit of salt. All right, so I'm just gonna combine all of this so now we have our seasoning blend all ready. We're going to season our fish. So I'm just going to make sure that I go through all the crevices to ensure that this fish is properly seasoned, properly marinated. And I'm also going to be adding it all over the fish and inside of the fish so that it can soak up all the goodness. And this was like the perfect 
perfect blend of seasoning i promise you guys so the fish was tasty it wasn't salty it wasn't fresh it just was perfect it wasn't spicy it just had the perfect amount of spice in it trust me and i added two scotch bonnet pepper but when you're adding pepper you have to know the pepper and the type of pepper that you're using these weren't overly spicy and they they were just perfect on the fish trust me all right so after it's well um, seasoned i am going to wrap it up and i'm going to set it aside in the refrigerator i'm also adding some thyme some fresh thyme on the inside for extra flavor i'm going to wrap it put it in the refrigerator while i um devein my shrimp and shell my shrimp so it's an hour later my stuffing is ready and my shrimp has been prepped and now we're going to put the fish in the oven so I'm going to be to doing two different types of roast fish. Both of them are going in the oven, but one is going to be wrapped in foil and one is going to be just in my baking pan. All right. Some people don't like to use aluminum foil when they're cooking, when they're applying heat, but it's up to you if you want to do it. It's not something that you do every day. So I'm going to be adding one in the foil and I'm going to be doing one separately without the foil to give you options. And I went ahead and I greased the bottom of my pan with some butter to prevent it from sticking. And I'm adding the remaining seasoning on top and I'm also going to add some butter to keep the fish moist. Also, you want to make sure that your oven is already preheated at 380 degrees. So like 10 to 15 minutes before the fish is ready to go in the oven, you have to make sure that your oven is prepped and ready to receive the fish. So now the fish is in the oven. We're moving on to the shrimp. I went ahead and I cleaned them. I removed the veins. I removed the shells of some of them and I kept the shells on because the shell does give your pot a nice seafood taste all right and I kept the tails on all of them so now it's rinsed with some lemon juice and I'm ready to season I'm adding the remaining of my green seasoning I'm also adding some dried thyme I'm adding some garlic powder some fresh herbs I mean dry herbs some onion powder and I'm also going to add a tablespoon of the Cajun seasoning and a teaspoon of the all-purpose seasoning. And that's it. So I'm using my spoon. Remember the tails are on and I have the shells on and some of the shrimp. So you have to be careful so that it doesn't pierce your hands or anything. So you have to use like a spoon to combine all the seasoning. And yeah, we're ready to go over to the pot. So remember guys, shrimp takes a little time to cook like eight to ten minutes but the curry is hard to cook so you don't want to add the curry to the shrimp you want to cook the curry first so i added about four tablespoons of oil and then i add a tablespoon and a half of curry and i'm just sauteing that i added some water to help to cook the curry and i have my stove on medium heat so as soon as that dried on i added some more water so I'm going to give it another five minutes. I give it five minutes first. I'm giving it another five minutes and I'm going to allow it to cook before adding my shrimp. All right. So after another five minutes, the water is reduced and I'm ready to add my shrimp. So remember, you don't have to do it this way. I'm just showing you this process because this is better when you're cooking shrimp because you don't want to taste the green on your curry. Is either you're going to taste the green on your curry or you're going to have to overcook your shrimp for the curry to be cooked. So, and both of them is just a no-no. So when you do it this way, it's just better. It goes down smoother on your stomach. All right, so now I'm adding my shrimp. I'm going to braise them in the curry oil for a little bit. And then I'm going to add a cup of water, cover it down on high heat. And in, an, in about 10 minutes, it's ready and good to go all right so there you have it i'm going to cover it down and i'm going to give it 10 minutes on high heat and then there you have it my shrimp is ready and it was so good as you can see the water has reduced to a nice semi-thick gravy and we are ready to serve so let's check our fish out all right the fish is hot and out of the oven we're going to look at this one first and 
oh my god guys it was so juicy so nice if you want to have like a roast look you can open up the foil pop it back in the oven and allow it to get a nice little crust on the top but i'm fine with it this way now this is the other one guys and trust me when i tell you guys these fish was so delicious they were so so delicious they were so good i'm using a spatula to lift them out so that it doesn't rip as you can see the tail of this one is sticking so i strongly advise that you add extra butter butter on the bottom or um use and make sure that you're using a non-stick i am using a non-stick but this part this pan is worn it's worn i've been using it for a while and yeah so it's starting to stick so now i'm i'm gonna be showing you guys how to you know present your plate for your fiance husband wife whomever just to make it look fancy right here at home you know um we have another outbreak and a lot of people are gonna be staying home so i'm just giving you guys ideas to set up your table and you know so i have a few setting on my table already that i have from christmas and luckily it's in red so you can have a little idea of how to um set your table so stay tuned for that i am now using this bowl that i had went ahead and i wet the bowl first before adding the rice in there and then i use my spoon to make sure that i press the rice down usually i would do this first and add it to the plate so that it comes out easier but um you just have to be careful when you're turning it out and then you can go ahead and use a spoon to fix it up if it gets messed up all right so i'm also going to be adding some vegetable on the side and on the next plate where i have the other roast fish i'm gonna be adding the curry shrimp and some rice but as i said before stay tuned i'm gonna be showing you um how to present this on your table and giving you some table setting idea so don't go anywhere guys stay tuned all right so when you're having seafood white wine is best okay so you want to purchase a bottle of white wine to place on your table if you're gonna be having this dish all right pertaining to my wine glass i did them myself last year i did them on my other channel which is my family channel it's called the row family and it's pretty easy you can do them yourself at home i am no pro so they're not all that but they're good enough for me all right so i use much Podge and glitter that i purchased at walmart so you can just go to your store and purchase a cheap wine bucket my wine bucket was one dollar i purchased it at the dollar store and the glasses were one dollar as well when you go over to my other channel you will get all the details of how to do this i just polish them with my mud podge glue and then i add the glitter on there to make them look fancy i also made some pink ones last year valentine's so i'll leave the link for those in my description box and also in my comment section pertaining to the flowers these are my christmas flowers but you can go ahead and buy a bunch of roses and add it to your vase you can use red vase or a gold vase whichever color you prefer so don't forget to check out my other channel where you can find um videos of how to set your table and stuff i will leave the link down below in my comment section all right thank you guys so much for watching i appreciate every single one of you stay safe and don't forget to be kind and show some love to each other